In the previous videos, I showed you how mathematics is creating a perpetual clock that recycles into infinity. I refer to this clock as the cipher, or the key that will unlock all the mysteries of time and space. I later theorized that the entire universe is simply a matrix constructed using the cipher, meaning that the universe is not a physical object or place, but simply a mathematical construct that exists only in time. In the next three videos, I will go into greater detail on how this happens and hopefully paint a clearer picture of what the universe is and how time works. The first thing we have to clear up is that the universe has no physical size. I have been saying this all along, but now I have to make this concept clear before we can proceed. There is no such thing as size. Space is relative. There is only the speed of light, which is absolute. Here is a practical, easy to understand example demonstrating this. Let's say you were standing 5 kilometers away from me and I wanted to know how far away are you. You'd say 5 kilometers, right? This measurement, however, is simply something we invented. There is no such thing as kilometers or size of any units. All our measurements are based upon our own clocks relative to the speed of light. Allow me to explain. If we are 5 kilometers apart and I am moving toward you at 1 kilometer per minute and you are standing still, I will reach you in 5 minutes, right? That's simple math. So if I asked you how far away are you when I am moving at 1 kilometer per minute toward you, you could say I am 5 minutes away. Your distance from me is purely based upon how fast I am moving relative to you. Let's say I change my speed to 1 km per second, but we don't change the distance or amount of space between us. How far away are you from me now? You are now only 5 seconds away from me, because at 1 km per second, I will get to you in 5 seconds. In terms of time, your distance from me has changed, yet the space between us was the same. Can you understand that distance does not exist? It is all relative to our speed, and the fastest that we can move is at the speed of light. If I was moving at the speed of light, and you were 5 kilometers away, I would get to you instantly, and there would be no distance between us. When energy converts to matter, we have the illusion of space. If we both stood still and never ever moved, the distance between us would not be 5 kilometers. It would be eternity, because I would never ever get to you. Your distance from me is purely based on how fast we are moving relative to each other. Obviously we invented ways of measuring space for practical reasons and for objects moving at slower than light speed, but on a universal scale there is no such thing as space. This is why the universe has no physical size or boundaries. Size simply does not exist. Everything only exists in time, and I will show you how this happens. To understand how the universe works, you need to understand circles and how mathematicians calculate the dimensions of a circle. This part may seem a bit technical. If you are not mathematically inclined, please don't be discouraged. I have to explain this to show how everything is simply a divine circle. Let's first look at the most basic parts of any circle, regardless of its size. The outer edge or rim of the circle, as shown in yellow, is the circumference. If you draw a line down the center of a circle, you get the diameter, as shown in orange, and half the diameter is called the radius, shown by the blue arrows. If you take any circle, the radius of that circle will fit into the circumference of the circle 6.2831 times. We call the angle created by this value the radian. A circle has 6.2831 radians. You must remember that the radian is not based on any physical size or dimensions. It is simply the ratio between the circumference of a circle and the radius of that circle. To convert from radians to man-made units like degrees, we simply divide 360 degrees by 6.283 in which case each radian is now equal to 57.2965 degrees. If we take the circumference of any circle 
and divide it by the diameter of that circle, we will get pi. For example, let's say you take a piece of string and measure the outside of a circle and find it is 100 centimeters long. If you measure the diameter, you will find that it is 31.83098 centimeters. 100 divided by 31.83098 will give you 3.14159. This value is pi. No matter what size your circle is, the circumference divided by the diameter will always give you pi. This is why pi is a mathematical constant. But you must bear in mind that the decimal places in pi continue into infinity. Pi is generally rounded off to 3.14159 decimal points for convenience sake. Because pi is a mathematical constant, you can calculate the other parts of a circle using pi. For example, if you knew the diameter of a circle was 50 centimeters, the circumference will be 50 times pi, which is 50 times 3.14159, which equals 157.08. Okay. Now that we know the basics of how a circle works, let's go back to our universe and see how it all ties in there. We know that our ancestors used 360 degrees on the circumference of a circle and 60 units on the circumference of a clock, but we don't know why they did this. However, if you look at mathematics, you will find that the Fibonacci sequence is creating a 60 digit repeat pattern that recycles into infinity. Mathematicians had already known about the 60 digit repeat cycle for some time, but what I discovered which was totally profound is that if you place those 60 digits around the circumference of a circle, the numbers create a perfect human clock as seen in video 1. To understand where our sense of time comes from, we must look at our Earth's rotation around its own central axis relative to our Sun. As the Earth spins around on its central axis, we move from light to dark depending on which side of Earth is facing the Sun. This motion around our central axis is relatively consistent and our ancient ancestors must have noted this and called one full cycle or one full revolution around the Earth's axis one day. This rotation relative to the Sun is our first concept of time. Over time, they would have noticed the changing seasons and realized, as we rightly did, that we have a bigger cycle called a year and so forth. But our first concept of time would be one day. Our Earth's rotation or frequency relative to the Sun is one revolution per day. This one day was divided into 24 hours and later broken into two equal parts of day and night, each with 12 hours. Each hour was later divided into 60 minutes and then into 60 seconds. If you watch the first videos, you'll see a plausible reason why they use 24, 12 and 60. This is where our concept of one second comes from. We have taken the rate of spin, which was one revolution per day, and broken it up into smaller, faster revolutions so we can keep more precise time. One second has no real size or measurement. It is simply a ratio determined by how many times it fits into our earthly cycle of one revolution per day. One second is traditionally our smallest quanta or packet of time that we use in our standard clocks. We can of course break one second up into smaller units of nanoseconds and so on, but we use seconds because this ties in perfectly with mathematics as we have seen. You must remember that this one revolution per second has no physical size. It is only a ratio representing a quanta of time. It doesn't mean that light takes one second to travel around the circumference of this tiny circle. This circle has no size. It represents a frequency of one revolution per second. Compared to a light flashing on and off at a frequency of one flash per second. So let's start with a circle that has a frequency of time at one revolution per second. The circumference of this circle is therefore equal to one. The radius of the circle will be 0.15915. The circumference is not divided into smaller parts because we are working with the smallest unit of time in our standard clocks. 
Next, we move up to a frequency of one revolution per minute. When we zoom out to our bigger cycle, our circumference is now divided up into 60 seconds. Our radius is 9.5493. Our frequency is one revolution per minute and is made up of 60 smaller cycles running at one revolution per second. This is very similar to the Mayans who had smaller cycles of time inside much bigger cycles of time. We can zoom out even further into our next cycle which consists of 60 minutes. Now our circumference has a value of 3600 seconds or 60 squared. It's 60 minutes times 60 seconds. The radius of this circle will be equal to 572.958 which is exactly equal to the value of one radian except that it is now one decimal point higher. At this point we can now see our standard analog clocks that we use to measure time here on Earth. A clock face is broken up into 60 minutes. Each minute has 60 seconds. Each revolution equals one hour. The frequency of this clock is one revolution per hour. 24 revolutions of this clock will equal one day. We can then zoom out into our final clock, which I refer to as the universal clock. This clock circumference is equal to 86,400 seconds, that's 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours, and represents one full day or one full rotation of the Earth upon its own central axis. These 86,400 seconds can be divided into 360 equal parts. This is where we get our 360 degrees from. These 360 degrees have nothing to do with Earth's orbit around the Sun, which just happens to be 365 days. We are now at one revolution per day, which is our initial concept of time, based on Earth's own daily rotation relative to the Sun. We don't use this circle as a clock, we use it as a compass with 360 degrees. But look what is happening here in this circle. Each one of those 360 degree points on this clock contains a Fibonacci clock whose sum is 240. I will elaborate on this in the next video. The radius of this circle is 13750 which just happens to be the scientific estimate for the radius of time. Science says that the universe is 137.5 billion years old. So no matter what direction you look out into space, you can only see 137.5 billion years in any direction. 13750 divided by 240 gives me 57.291 which is the value of one radian. Our concept of time is based on Earth's rotation upon its central axis relative to the Sun and the diameter of the Sun just happens to be 864,327 miles. You can round that off to 864,000 miles. What does this tell me? It shows that time is a circle. We see a radius of time equal to 137.5 billion years because the Earth is spinning at a frequency of one revolution per 86,400 seconds. There is no way all these numbers can magically align if time were not a circle. If time is a circle, how could there have been a start or end to time? A circle is eternal, it has no beginning or end. The universe cannot be growing bigger or smaller because it has no size. There was no Big Bang. There is a lot more I need to explain in here, but I had to first give you all this information so I can refer back to it, which I will do in my next videos. Please watch all my previous videos and please buy a copy of my book. What I am telling you here is only half the answer to the riddle of creation. The other half comes from how I found all this. Once you understand these concepts of why we tell time the way we do, I will be able to tell you why the speed of light is absolute and even why we have something like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. All the answers to the riddle of creation are waiting right here.